Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will look at topics for the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today we will look at the use of graphics commands in creating a digital countdown clock. Today we are going to look at one of the sample programs that ships with PowerBasic Windows Compiler. This sample application takes a bitmap file and uses it to display on the screen a digital clock. What I've done for the application already is I've increased the size of this bitmap and the size of the clock it will display on screen, like so, just to make it big enough so it's easily visible. If we try running this application now, it will display our digital clock on the screen with hours, minutes and seconds. What we're going to do today are a few small changes to this application to allow it to be a countdown clock. The first thing I've done is I've expanded the big digits bitmap. This as well as having the numbers also has now the words months, days, hours and minutes. The idea with this application is we will set a target date some point in the future and when the application is running it will tell us how many months, days, hours and minutes there are to go until we reach that date. So in our application we will change our resource to point towards the new bitmap. And we will set a constant up for our target date to be an arbitrary date a couple of years or so in the future. And to accommodate this slightly larger clock we're going to make the dialogue slightly larger too. Currently it's 480 by 80. We're going to push that up to 680 by 120. And we're going to make a similar change in size to the size of the graphics control which sits on that window. We will now have a look at the callback function which is our event handler. In the event handler there is a timer. The timer at the moment triggers every half second. Since the lowest value we're going to be showing on screen is a minute, we're going to trigger this every 30 seconds. So where we're creating the timer, we'll change that from 500 to 30,000, which is milliseconds to give us the 30 seconds. We also want to change the size of our bitmap, since our bitmap is slightly larger, and the existing code is designed to lift off the bitmap the individual numbers and also the colon for the space between the hours, minutes and seconds. Now we won't be needing the colon so we can comment these two lines of code out. We will still be needing the graphics copy command. However the last digit we're going to amend from 0 to 40 because we want the numbers slightly lower down on the graphics control than they were before. The top 40 pixels are going to be for the titles. So up here where we set the time, it picks up using time dollar, we're going to change that, populate that string with a function. We'll call that function get countdown. So let's create that new function. This function is going to return the string we want to display on our graphics control. So it will return months, days, hours and minutes. So we will create a local variable to hold the result we're going to return to the calling routine. And we're going to be using the power time class for our calculations. So we created a power time variable called datecalc. We define that as the class of power time and we're setting the value of datecalc to now, which is the day, month, year and time. So we'll want a similar variable to hold the future date and time. And we will create local variables to hold the year, month and day. Now that they are prepared, we can actually populate our future date into these variables. So we're taking the constant, which is our target date. We're taking the right hand four characters. And we're turning that into a number and populating the year variable. Since the date we put in is in the UK format, the month is the fourth character for two characters. If you wish to change this to American format, you merely have to change these numbers. And to pick up the day, we're picking up the left two characters and turning it into a value and populating long day. And we're setting our new power time variable to be that value. So now that we have these two power time variables actually set up, 
we want to determine the difference between these two dates. So we will prepare some local variables to allow us to calculate that. For the years, months and days, hours and minutes. So the first thing to do is to work out the first part of our calculation. And we're going to use date diff for that. And we're giving it date calc, which is our current date, using date diff, and our variables are future date. That will return the number of years, months, and days, which is the first part. And we can build up our result from the data we have so far, taking the number of months plus the number of years times 12, as the future date could well be years in the future, and we will be wanting to display months. We're setting this up, so we work out the number of months in the year plus the number of months that the date diff has returned. Now we need to calculate the second part, which will give us the hours and minutes. And to do this, we're using date calc again, but we're using the time diff now. The same variables, future date, the sign, but this time we're looking for days, hours and minutes. Now, although we've already calculated days, it's the hours and minutes we're interested in. And having got those, we will add them onto our result. So now we should have all the information sitting in the result that's going to display on the screen. So we can return this to the calling function, like so. Quick compile to see we haven't missed anything. And if we go back to our event handler, if we run the code as it stands now, we will get our months, days, hours and minutes. But we haven't got the titles yet. We need to pull the titles back from our bitmap. So we need another line of code. Just before we redraw the graphic, we need to copy the details from the existing graphic bitmap. So as we did above, we need a graphics copy command. First parameter is the handle of the bitmap. And this is all coming from the existing bitmap. If we have a look at the existing bitmap, we'll see that we have months, days and hours in the last 40 pixels. So we need to pick up this entire bottom section and display it on the graphics control. So our parameters first of all are a zero, and then we want the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner. And we're copying that to the top left hand corner of our graphics control. So now we have that in place, if we try running that now, we'll see that we do indeed have the months, days, hours and minutes above our values. And as this is currently running, it will display the information and update it every 30 seconds. So once a minute, when the number of minutes steps down, it will go from 34 down to 33. And there we have it stepping down to 33. As it's updating all the numbers, when it gets time to step the number of hours down from 7 till 6, this will happen automatically. There's nothing special in the application to handle the event when it reaches 0 months, 0 days, 0 hours and 0 minutes. However, you can quite happily test this in your code. I'll leave that as an exercise for yourself. So how could we display this on our screen? Since I'm currently using OBS to record this video, I could use OBS itself. Like so. So there is our time, shown as months, days, hours and minutes, showing on our screen. Hopefully you'll find this code useful in your own applications. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.